Hey, welcome back. Reporter Waverly Monroe joins us now at the Dodge Plaza Chick-fil-A. Waverly? Thanks, Matt. People are anticipating the grand opening for the new Chick-fil-A, and to tell you the truth, it's probably the perfect day to do it. It does not feel like mid-February February out here right now. These 100 people have been here since 5.30 this morning waiting to get their prize. It is one of the age-old questions. Is it worth the wait? Totally worth it. And for Forrest Hewlett, it is. Every grand opening for Chick-fil-A offers the first 100 people in the city a chance to receive a card loaded with 52 free meals. Dodge Plaza Chick-fil-A owner Ed Duan says the meal is the original. The meal that is available with this card is our original Chick-fil-A sandwich meal, which includes the Chick-fil-A sandwich, waffle fries, and a medium drink. The meal card does not expire for a whole year, essentially giving customers a free meal each week. The whole year, a bunch of friends and I would go get Chick-fil-A for free all the time. Both Hewlett and Duane suggest bringing outdoor gear to be prepared for the cold night. Though the parking lot is empty now, soon it will be filled with games, tents, and of course, people waiting in line. Pitching a tent is the first task for First 100, Blake and Liz Molly. Blake Molly says he came at 5.30. And I slept in and came at like 9.30. Each person who arrives gets their number in line. Molly says that it can be a commitment for those who have busy days. Some people that thought they could just show up and leave, but you actually, you got if once you're registered, you can't leave the premises. So that's why a lot of people don't, it seems like a lot of people don't show up because of that. Hewlett recalls the last time he was a first 100. They check to make sure you don't leave, right? And they do it in fun ways, like they had us all line up and walk through the drive through and get like hot cookies and milk. Hewlett also recommends for anyone going to... Um, show up after I do. And I'm standing here with Austin Griffith today. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and tell me what's so great about Chick-fil-A that you're willing to camp overnight to get their free chicken meals. Okay, yeah, this one's easy. Um, Chick-fil-A is a Christian organization, and uh, I love to come out and be able to support them because they have great service, and uh, as you can see here, they're able to bring the community together and just have a good time. All right, thank you, Austin. Well, there you have it. Uh, now, all these people have to do is wait until tomorrow morning when Duane opens the doors. Back to you, Matt and Jamie. Pastor Leroy yeah. Adams Jr. says he was watching the Flint water crisis coverage and he felt he needed to do something to help. And water is a necessity and so uh, just that alone just made me uh, sort of uh, take the initiative to say something had to be done. For volunteer Rufus Haynes, the need for help is a little closer to home than many in the metro. And we have relatives there in Flint, Michigan and I don't know whether they're going to get in it or not, but, uh, you know, uh, it's going up. Payne says as long as there is water to load, he will be there. Pastor Adams began collecting cases of water since late January. And the first 800 cases are already on their way to Flint. Though the help is here now, Flint's water issues didn't just stir up overnight. This has been going on for almost two years. Um, the awareness nationally just occurred over the last three or four months. Also in the last two years, Kaneko worked towards an exhibit focused on water. It shows a unique and productive way to access clean water. Kaneko program manager Michael Hollins says that along with the Flint water crisis, it gives the exhibit an impact on the metro. What we hope is that we're starting a dialogue and opening up these issues to people. While the water issues are being brought up locally and in Flint, it shows that the community is banding together to open the dialogue for clean water access. The Omaha chapter of the NAACP oh, wanted to join the conversation. Omaha's NAACP president, Vicki Young, quickly responded to Adams' call to action. It sends some type of relief to the community of Flint. Chemicals that we're testing for, you can't visually see them. So what we go through and do is we do simple testing. What simple testing indicates is whether there is atrazine in your tap water. Atrazine is one of the most common pesticides and is used on corn. Doherty Water for Food Institute graduate fellow Jonathan Alley says anyone can do tests on their tap water. And if you are concerned about your water, you should. Ali says the test will provide a positive or negative result 10 minutes after you place the test in the tap water. So we have a little test strip and 
It acts like a pregnancy test. It's either positive or negative at the safe drinking water level. Ali water says the citizen tests help find atrazine and other chemicals that are in our water and how they get there. It's not a chronic ongoing problem like what you see in Flint, Michigan. Ali says that our contaminants are yeah, seasonal. Know, we go through these bouts of peaks and troughs of contaminants in our watershed. Most of these issues are common all through Nebraska. Metropolitan Utilities District chemist Marion Feltis says MUD monitors the water and changes throughout the year. We have people here 24 hours a day all the time and they're always constantly monitoring our treatment. Feltis also says you should never drink or cook with warm water. Though MUD filters out any chemicals before we have access to it, they still recommend that if you haven't used your faucet for up to a half an hour, let it run for two minutes before using it. Feltis also says not to drink the warm water because it sits in the pipes and collects bacteria. Especially in the morning when you notice that the water's stood in the pipes overnight. For the Omaha News, I'm Waverly Monroe. Though President Obama has not officially stated who he is rooting for in this election, it is not far from reality on why he chose to make an appearance in Omaha just weeks before the Iowa caucus. Edible Arrangements has been planning for Valentine's Day since the day after Christmas, and Terrell's Floral Shop has already ordered over 500 red roses. Though both owners state that the actual Valentine's Day is not their biggest concern. Though MUD filters out any chemicals before we have access to it, they still recommend that if you haven't used your faucet for up to a half an hour, let it run for two minutes before using it. As the election cycle continues, there is a growing question about the participation of millennial voters. What drives their lack of participation and why their vote is important? I'm Waverly Monroe. For the Omaha News, I'm Avery Wink. According to Sewell, there are hundreds of cans donated and the dock workers remarked that it was the largest single carload of donated food they'd seen. And that does it for this week's edition of the Omaha News. From all of us here, thanks for joining us and good night.